right, so I'm going to make everybody here in five minutes. I've been running Shadow CLGS. You're going to be Flint Script developers. There we go. Let me start a timer, so I'm going to keep this going and not go over. And okay. So we're going to use Shadow CLGS and Flint Script. Uh, first off, what this will demonstrate, you're going to see how to get Flint Script installed, how to configure it, how to run and build it, and then how to deploy it on Netlify. So in five minutes, you can try it out, see if you like it, abandon it, and never use it again. Uh, so why Flint Script is functional? It has an interactive Drupal. It's immutable. You cannot change values. That's super, super, super nice when you start messing with large code bases and you can't affect things that aren't on the screen. Uh, it uses Google Closure, so we've had tree shaking or what was called dead code elimination five years ago for a very long time. It's also got object-oriented aspects, but the good part is there's better dispatch. It doesn't have to do inheritance exchange, but there's lots of things and protocols that you can inherit, things like that. Uh, so what is Shadow CLTS? So ClojureScript is a JAR file. It's a Java program. Um, it's compiling. Uh, so we need the interface for it. It's going to do the configurations for it, do all the build tooling, so our life is great. Uh, it's going to set up web sockets, connects to the browser, so it can refresh and reloads, and our life is great. Um, so getting set up, the web is built on this language, and so we're of course going to need this language. It is C++. Uh, so we need to use C++ <laughs> uh, JDK and Node. Uh, that's for you, Chris. So we get those installed, it's very easy. So we're going to target a browser, it's going to be very easy. Make an app, cd into it, npm in it, and npm install react, create react, react class, react dom, and then slash one, shadow CLJS. This should be very, very familiar for anybody that's on web dev. Uh, there's also some starters that bring in headless browsers a little bit heavy on right now. Um, so a little bit of config, you never get away from config, very, very simple. Four things in the dictionary, builds, we're going to make something called app, we're going to say where the start function is, where it goes, it's targeting the browser. There's a dependency reagent that wraps React, so we can talk with it with closure script and readability. Uh, dev so we're going to serve it at 3000, and finally where our files go in source. So we're done configuring, and this looks very familiar. The very important thing is div apps, we have to name it, and they require a source and a column. And so here's one thing you get to use is Hiccup. Here's traditional HTML, looks like a bunch of stuff. You have to make sure it packs, don't overlap and everything. Here's our tree view of just vectors, just data, and they can't overlap. They can't be invalid. It is just a very simple translation. If you squint, it looks the same. But you get to interact with this as data instead of characters and strings and whatnot. Um, so a closer look, here's what your file is going to look like. Namespace, app.name, and notice the file is going to be an app name.cojs. And we're going to require our dependency react, or reagent, which is the uh, wrap above it. And here's our app. It's going to be a div, style, margin, auto, margin, top, width, and it's an H1 that says hi. And that's it. So it looks very much like HTML, a little bit of boilerplate. Um, here, the React render. Notice we're calling. So notice the parens say like invoke function call. Notice this is square brackets. That's just a vector. We're rendering data, and it's going to reconcile what that looks like. We're not invoking things. We're just giving it a vector of stuff, and it will figure out how to do that. And then finally, an init function that just calls start. And this is what the whole file looks like. It's very very straightforward. If you've done some React, it should look similar, except a little bit squinted differently. <coughs> Uh, so to run the app, npx, if you're familiar with that, I'll let you run dependencies locally instead of installing it globally. Shadow CLJS, watch app. But we'll run, compile, the first time is 32 seconds. After that, from the cold start, it's about 7 seconds. On changes, it'll recompile about half a second. Um, if you remember, we configured 3000, so we're going to go visit 3000. I've been running. It's closure script, so we want to REPL so we can interact with it. It runs inside of our program, not adjacent to it, so it's very, very nice. Shadow CLJS, CLJS REPL, app. Um, if you try it, you'll notice that it might say, like, hey, I don't have a JavaScript environment. Once you open up the browser, this is going to run your code actually inside of that browser. That's the about execution environment. So once it's connected, then you can require your name, and then you can just call it function app. Here we're actually calling it. You'll see it just returns vectors. It's simple code. You just interact with it. It's a vector. You can map, filter, reduce it, whatever you want. Um, so the reference CLJS, I assume that it's useful because you're probably using hot reloading anyways, but it is nice if you're making more kind of library-based stuff. On the JVM, if you're doing back and stuff, it's very, 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 very nice for REPL. Um, NPM packages, we want to use React Mobile. We NPM install it, and we don't have to restart anything. Then we just say, like, hey, I want to use React Mobile. That's Mobile. Here we do a little, uh, what's called an atom. If you look at this, it looks like a hook, so we've had it for like six years. Although they're not quite as good as, <laughs> not quite as, good as hooks, because I think y'all get some refreshing that we don't get. It. Um, but then here you can see the interrupt. Hey, I'm going to use a model. Here's the props. Here's the 
children. And um, it looks very, very similar to React, and it gets used in GitHub instead of React for us. Um, Netlify, here's the published build command, ngx shell CLUS release app. Published directory is public, it's now deployed and live on the cloud, and whatever, you can go see it. We'll see it in a second. Because it's right here, and we'll go see it in a second. Uh, the bad, you can use post slips, but not all, because the Google Closure compiler, so it kind of has to be kind of aware of that. Um, but usually it works. The tooling stuff that is polished, JavaScript has like 15 million developers, and so there's 100,000 rock stars making amazing tooling and things like that. Uh, we have a much, much smaller community, but we do have a lot of good stuff going for us. Uh, the immutability in the REPL is super, super nice. Uh, it's very nice to work in, and we get to use some of the ecosystem that the JavaScript people. Um, shout out to the OSS users, guys, what we did here. It gets you up and running. As you can see, it's very, very simple, and it looks very similar to create React app, except the parentheses go on the outside instead of at the end. Um, and then some kind of like links there for you. And I guess we can go look at it. And this is the site that we made. It says hi, there's a button, and we click it. There's our React model, just like you would see. Um, very straightforward, very easy to work with. And if you'll notice, we used 19 slides because ClojureScript helps us come in under budget. <laughs> so yes, this press day. Any questions? How is Closure Script related to Closure? Um, so they are essentially the same language but with different targets. Um, Closure is a Java jar. Closure Script is a Java jar that depends on Closure. It's a Closure program that will emit JavaScript that is targeted for the Google Closure compiler, then gets eliminated at the tree and all that. But you can target Node, you can target um, Lambdas, browsers, um, there was a, a web worker, anything like that. Um, and in general, if you do want to get into it, Shadow CLJS is the way to go. They handle all the rough edges for you and make sure that interop is very, very seamless and easy to go. Um, and I don't know how to do. There we go.